Alrighty guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you, wherever you are across this beautiful world. I'm Cactus. For some odd reason, I cannot hear you. Because of the fact that I have not deafened myself. <laughs> there you go, I was just kidding. Good afternoon to you, buddy, good to see you. Good to see you as well. Oh my goodness. Long ways away, man. Just seeing back in the school, back in the old school days. Way back when you had old consoles versus the new consoles today. Think about this for a second. The evolution of gaming. Think how far we've gone in the last 20, 30, 40 years. Hell, do you remember Sonic the Hedgehog when that first came out? Do 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 oh do, do, do do. It was like I whole love Sonic. It was like, holy crap, this is like the bomb ditty of games. This is like a, mm -hmm. an evolution of 16-bit. But what about its little brother, 8-bit, Mr. Nintendo? Dude. I remember having a Nintendo. Right. I had a Nintendo. I had the um, 64. Mm -hmm. I remember having to take the cartridges and blowing them. Yeah. Blow oh, the dust yeah. out to get them to work. That was, that was yeah, you were like the guru. <laughs> Of your neighbors, like if you were to sit there and they're like, my my game count, it's not working. The cartridge, you just like, like a harmonica, and then you put that that sucker in, and you're like, ha ha, yeah, I'm not gotcha. worthy, yeah, I'm not worthy, which is kind of funny because <laughs> I had a neighbor named Josh who did that. He did some uh, similar things like that. You know, he would come over, this son of a bitch, even when he would he would take out the, he would have the shell. All it took was hmm. two screws to unscrew. Take yep. the shell off it. You can take out the components of the game itself and put it into another console, another game. So if I had, for example, um, uh, Super Mario World, or no, I was regular Mario World. I put it in, he took it out, and he would exchange it for something else. So in other words, he was trying to cheat me, which was, mm -hmm. which was really irritating. I didn't like that one bit. But think about like the evolution. Do you know Nintendo... Do you know how long, how far back Nintendo's been around? Oh, man. Um, I'm not sure what year it came out, but I remember my mom used to play it. I know it, my dad would remember what year it came out. Right. But, I mean, Nintendo, the company itself, dates back to the 1800s. Isn't that crazy? Jeez, I did not know that. Nintendo started out as a making uh trading cards or just little cards for games and stuff like i'm talking like board games i'm not talking you know games like we have today but it started off over back in the 1800s like late 1800s i couldn't believe that i was like wow that's crazy so nintendo has been around forever then they started developing things and started becoming electronics and stuff like that yeah. which is which is a whole different ball game but let's talk about the evolution of gaming where we start i guess we can go back to like atari 2600 days yeah. Or even in television days, which is even predates the Atari. So you had things basically from what I have seen and read where you would post something on your TV. And we're talking like mm -hmm. Pong, basically. Mm -hmm. You would yeah. stick it on there and, and it was just like a sheet of paper. You would stick it onto your TV screen and then your friend counterpart, your friend was with you, would play the one paddle on one side, the other person would play the other paddle. And that was it. That was considered entertainment for the family. I mean, yeah. we laugh at it now, but holy hell, that must have been like an, an amazing technology boost from, you know, back in the days. I mean, I'm sorry, but being a, a kid of the 90s, I don't think I would have survived only <laughs> having Pong on the TV. <laughs> I mean,. <laughs> You think about like the okay the infamous joystick controller that we have. To, well, we have a controller today. That's yeah, a lot more it fits, advanced. It fits in your <laughs> hand more so than the traditional like the Atari twenty six hundred joystick. joystick with the two buttons, and that's what you had. And that's all you had. You only could do one thing with it. You would control the stick like you would control, I guess, the like a plane or a helicopter. You know, mm -hmm. you go like this. Or just like how it is in the arcades too, but that yeah. don't get me started on arcades because I could go on for years oh, about arcades. But <laughs> the evolution of the games, though, back then, you know, you figure out like how they started out. the The eight bits. I mean, it was hard to do programming because if you look yeah. at like 
I remember I was my cousin who was like a, a, a complete utter nerd and bless his heart. He's probably like freaking CEO of some company somewhere out there with computers. I'm sure <laughs> that I don't know of. Hey, look, Rich, give me some of that cash. Okay. <clears throat> he just and got a shout out. He just got a <laughs> shout out by me. <laughs> and he, <laughs> he would sit there and like he would have a, this, he would have like a book and it was like, basically what it was is it was pre-programmed things. You would type in this sentence like WD3A equals 25. I mean, it was like a whole sheet of paper mm-hmm. of, of code lines that you, and there's like 200 lines. And, and if you did it correctly without messing it up, if you'd got all the code properly done after like a half hour typing, maybe just maybe like the screen would turn to a different color and fade in fade out or flash really fast. And then you would see like a little ball bounce and that was it. That was frigging it. You spent a half hour coding that the screen turning colors and then a little bouncing ball. And that was it. But see, that was technology back then. That's the shit. Yep. Now, if you fast forward a little bit in time, as time progressed, computer programming got, it's still a little hard. It's still hard. Don't get me wrong. I oh, mean, yeah. there's, there's people that do code all the time. I mean, just look at if you hit like F5 and then hit inspect or right click on something and hit inspect, it gives you a shit ton of code. Yeah. It's same thing was, you know, back then, but technology has gotten a little bit better, a little bit faster where you can type in stuff still manually coding, but then now you have like manpower to do it. But back in the day, eight bits, Atari 2600, the Atari 5200, which is this bigger brother, supposedly better, you know, better graphics and stuff like this. Then you had the, there was the Sega Shark, I think it was called, Mm -hmm. the Sega Genesis, the Sega something I can't think of offhand, but there was like several jumps. Mm -hmm. But I do remember, you know, stuff like that where it was like, uh, and then you had PlayStation that was competing against Nintendo. You know, then then oh, the boom came. There was that suit. There was that jump from eight bit to well, now I can do double the amount of bits. It's mm-hmm. like so sixteen bit came around. Like holy shit, this is crazy! Look at the graphics. Yeah. Look at Sonic. He's pixelated, but he's running around in those rings. And and if you've ever heard the music, if you still remember mm-hmm. the music to this day. You know, I, I, I go back and forth with Sonic. I love Sonic. It was really good. Oh, yeah. But then you had Nintendo. Then you got, then it's bigger brother. Nintendo 64 comes out. You know, it's like, ho, ho. It's like, God, Lord. What was your first, what was your first uh, console? First one I can remember. Okay. Like, I know we had the Ed 64 mm-hmm, as, mm-hmm. as a child. Mm. I remember that. Right. I mean, my family, we've gotten consoles from nintendo playstation right. and xbox <clears throat> and the first one i can remember playing was i would play the marios on n64 and another game that we had for i'm pretty sure it was for 64 was duck hunt that game was, that was yeah the with the little gun and stuff that uh-huh. of course today you would never they would never yeah. be able to market that ever again. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know? It's just like if you recall, you probably don't. But my, the Megatron, the pri- the star, uh, off talk, off topic, but Transformers, mm-hmm. Megatron turns into a big. I think it's a Magnum gun. I think it's a. I, I don't know if it's a what kind of gun it is per se, but I think it's a Magnum. And if you were to transform it and put it together, it looks like a real handgun. Of yeah. course, today, you know, they always put a little red circle on the front of the barrel to, yeah. to show that it's not, but it's a whole different thing. But Duck Hunt, though, yes, I do recall that. And there's that little laughing little shit. <laughs> that dog oh was sit there, <laughs> you know, it yep. laugh at you if you miss. <laughs> I can't help the duck is going, wah, 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 wah. I'm trying to shoot the thing. But you yeah, remember. exactly. But see, that was when it really started getting really interesting that's when that flip from okay we have nintendo which has like ice climber it has uh there were so many different games for that console and zelda but then super nintendo came out and like oh 
you know, stuff like that came out, and it was like that's a whole different ballgame. Nintendo sixty four. Mm-hmm. So you went from sixteen bit. I don't know if there was a thirty two bit. Then it went to sixty four. And then it's just like. I'm not sure if there was anything in between the Super and the 64. Hmm. That was crazy. That's, that's something to look up for sure. That's, that's definitely something to, you know, research. And, it is, definitely. And see. But think about all the, like, the 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 coding, everything today, like we, we discussed before on, on this channel, uh, on the on podcast. Was we were talking about like the, the 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 graphics, how quickly you can change all the graphics, or you can oh, yeah. tweak PC games versus more oh. like console games. But yes. if you think about like all the games today versus the games back then, they were so pixelated, so edges were so sharp and stuff. But mm-hmm. we didn't have the technology to do that. We didn't have the technology to say, okay, let's add anti-aliasing. I don't uh-huh. know what the hell that was. I'm like, anti means against, doesn't it? Like, I'm anti turkey. I mean, isn't <laughs> am I am I right when I say anti? Isn't that like the you're against? Yeah, that's supposed to be something that's. So why in the hell is it called anti aliasing? But it makes things look better. Is it is is aliasing defined as sharpness or something? Because I don't know. But I have I, no idea. One of the first games I remember playing was the. Was Mario Sunshine, which was... Oh my was, god, I love that game. The music, just as a musician, the music drew me in, Fufu. That that was on the the GameCube, wasn't it? Was it the GameCube? That was the, that was, yeah. that was the 32-bit. So 16-bit was, you know, it went from uh, Super NES, and then, uh, yeah, Super NES, and then the GameCube, then the Nintendo 64. So I think that was it. I think that was the the jump. Remember we were talking about thirty two. I, I bit. remember I remember sitting there in my living room mm-hmm. on our our big ass TV, and it mm-hmm. was it was a big screen, but it wasn't one of the flat screens that we got today. It, it was had just that big, big, bulky backs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> those those two projector big screens, <laughs> and we would just. Every weekend we would sit around and we'd get on the GameCube. Right. We'd play Mario Sunshine. Mario Sunshine. Zelda, yeah. Um, play fucking Mario Brothers, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. was that was our weekend family time. Was, Getting those stars was such yes. a, it was such a, a good feeling when you cleared around, you know, let's to go. He jump in. Mm-hmm. It's like whoa, like holy hell, that's great effects. Mm-hmm. It was it was one of those awesome, amazing things, you know. And then just the three D perspective, you know, the perception. You can go around, you can look all the way around you. You weren't mm-hmm. you weren't just stuck in two D. It you wasn't can, a fixed focus. Yes, now you can actually look around. You can actually do things. Everything looks bigger. It's kind of like life sized, where you have this big. You know, the mushrooms were bigger and, you know, it's just, it looks mm-hmm. so interesting. It gave a whole new, like, obviously it gave a new dimension to it because it, it wasn't just like you're looking at a piece of paper. Right. You right. have the entire world to look at and play through. Exactly. And I, I think that was an amazing, like, jump between now, the Mario's. Oh, absolutely. And the boss, the music just got better and better too. Not mm-hmm. just, the, not just graphically, and, you know, and talking as uh, we're talking with the whole package, including like music back then, 8-bit music was kind of, you know, doom, 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 yeah. doom, like battle yeah. toads and, 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 you know, stuff like this and, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and stuff was, it was 8-bit music. Then the jump to 16. So things started getting a little bit better, but see then when it comes to writing music, Files get bigger and bigger too. Like if I if I orchestrate a song, if I write a song, and if I were to say, okay, I'm going to throw this into a a uh, game a day, I would have to calculate how many megabytes that's yep. going to take, and then the director or the the person then would say, okay, eh, can you cut that short twenty seconds? Yeah, you have to rework it and stuff like that, which is kind of silly. But can you imagine right now, like if if you had 
the games, what if we were still stuck in 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit? You couldn't play with friends online together, which we'll talk about that shortly too as time regresses. But you didn't have you didn't have Wi-Fi, you didn't have hardwire uh-huh. connections, you didn't have any of that stuff. Everything was just you plugged it in and you played with family and that was it. You played with your yep. friends. You would bet money on him. Oh wait, <clears throat> maybe maybe that was me. <laughs> Only that did that. certain places, <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. But I mean, there's a lot of games like people like are not familiar with. You may be familiar with some the older school people that would know like Atari games or in television or even ColecoVision. Oh, there's another one too, ColecoVision. That was a whole different. They oh, yeah. had all kinds of interesting games, but it, that was like a kind of a jump, like a competitive race. Sega Shark, I think it was. I think I said that before, but I think that yeah. was what it was called. They had that, and they, and then, in, but like I said, Sonic the Hedgehog was was infinitely amazing. It had a, the rings, the the music. Yep. I mean, every time you go around, you spin really fast, and boom, you take off, and it would be like, oh, he's gone. Yeah. Today's stuff. Each, each of the um, each of the consoles, like each of the brands, had their own game, mm-hmm. like with the sega you had sonic Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. nintendo you had mario right playstation was like street fighter or oh yeah street fighter yeah and Mm -hmm. then xbox was the halo series which is still going on today so good old chief it, it all depends on what system you had or wanted mm what what console was was born in your throat like a silver spoon exactly do you remember this do you remember that and stuff like that you know you had well the gtas and yeah, those to... were those were mostly playstation back in the, the mm-hmm. older days mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which i know because like i said my my family we had the gamecube we had the genesis when i was really little we had um the GameCube and yeah. N64. We had the uh, original Xbox. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we had we had a variety. I was always a now, PlayStation fan, but I, I turned. I was about in- to say my my I kind of drew away from Xbox and went more for PlayStation and the Nintendo. And growing up, I really don't care too much for Xbox. This is why I, you and I'm, I are perfectly good together as hosts and hostesses because I went the opposite way. I was stuck with PlayStation. My cousins had the Xbox, the original 360. I always sat there and said, hey, you're not gonna, I love my PlayStation. But then Xbox mm-hmm. all of a sudden became more into my life. I was gifted an Xbox 360 and then I said, buy PlayStation. So I was quite the opposite of you. And see, like growing up, I think what, kind of pushed me off of xbox mostly was my brothers okay when we got the original xbox the first game that we got with it was halo Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and of course in on the xbox you can play with like split screen my brothers they set up a character they did not tell me anything about (laughs) this game they had been playing it for a while and I watched them a little bit and they made me a character Okay. and I was probably like seven, eight years old and they had to make it stand out. So they knew it was me. So they made it a bright pink. <laughs> okay. And they, they did this strictly so they could get better. They named the character Pink Death. So that way they knew exactly what character to go after. And they would just gang up on me and destroy me. And that kind of like, all right, I'm done with this. Y'all can have the Xbox. I'll stick with the PlayStation. You just went with the PlayStation ever since. Wow. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) That's crazy. (laughs) My brothers were kind of pain in the asses when i was growing up aren't they always though a sibling rival rivalries will always yep. be a thing even in game to playing games you know it's like my family oh, yeah. being a single cacti 
growing up and stuff like this, you know, my cousins, my family members, the mob, if you will, of the cacti. Yeah. <laughs> we would like take back and forth. No, it's my turn. No, it's my turn. You know, and sit there and like, I I do like, um, oh, uh, what was that called? Uh, do, do, do. We do like um, double dragon and stuff like this. Or they would have, they've had like a whole, because see, they grew up, and like I was telling you about, you know, they, the, the one that probably has a ton of money now as the CEO. Uh-huh. His family, my cousins, my little cousins and stuff, we were playing these games and stuff. They had all the new stuff. Yeah. They had all the new games and all the new, st- all the new trends. As soon as they'd hit the market, oh, it's, that's 200 bucks. No problem. There you go. You know, they, they mm-hmm. had it. You know, I, I grew up in a modest family where Father Cacti was the bread, breadwinner of the family. Mm-hmm. Traditional stay at home mom Cacti. Mm-hmm. You know, she would stay home and raised me and she'd, you know, and that was, that was how I lived it. And we'd get, they would get whatever they could for me. You know, I wasn't a greedy one or I wasn't whatever. But when it came to like games and stuff like that, I, I noticed early on Mother Cacti also had a, um, she liked especially the games that had like Mario and stuff like that. Mario um, Kart. Mario Kart was like a big thing oh. in my family. My mom and I would play that like crazy. Mm-hmm. I'd always remember the ghost, the haunted one, the the level where you're driving around and there's the there's the rainbow one too, but there was the ghost one. Rainbow Road is yes. a hard track. It is. To beat. I think it's the hardest one of the whole thing. Oh yeah. The music though, but the energy that you got from it, you know, and to this day you still think about it. there's still a lot of Mario Karts to this day. Even they just came out with a new one for the Switch not that long ago. And and see, and that's cool because I mean that is back in the older times and a lot of these next gen, next Ys, next Zs or whatever they're called, they don't know those games. And those games were effing fun, okay? Mario Parties. Oh, I used to play that oh, with my yeah. ex-girlfriend. Her and I, she used to whoop my ass in that game. But we would get, <laughs> she would have like Mario Party 7 or whatever it was. And we would play that game from like, I, I shoo, from like evening time to early morning. You know, we'd play, we'd be up all night playing these games, which is really cool, which I loved. I love games like that where it has playability. Yes. You know, and a lot of these games back then had those too. You know, you'd have Contra, you would have Double Dragon, you would have Street Fighter. Street Fighter was really fun. Street Fighter was amazing. I mean, it went from port from from the arcade to port to the mm-hmm. you know the consoles and stuff. But that was a really fun game too. I used to kick some ass on that game. I still can. I bet I still could if I played it today. I don't know if Let's they play it, Cactus. Oh, oh, oh it's on like Donkey Kong. <laughs> Speaking of Donkey Kong, there you go. There's an old one. Have you ever played the original Donkey Kong? Like I'm talking where he's at the top of the thing, you're climbing ladders uh-huh. and there's burning barrels that are rolling. And if he's you take throwing barrels at you, yeah. And you take the hammer and you nail them and stuff like you've so you've played that game. You either hit them with the hammer or you jump over them. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they would flip. Or they would do mm-hmm. the reverse and kill you. Yep. I you, remember playing that one. Did you ever play the original Mario Brothers? I, yeah, I've played the original Mario Brothers. The one, I even, I, I played the original Mario Brothers when I was younger because mm-hmm. my mom absolutely loved Mario when I was a kid. Right. That was her time. And I, I loved the Mario Brothers so much. When I got my Switch, I got a NES and Super NES pack that had the original Mario Brothers. The one on with them. the pow in the middle and the little ducks or the turtles. I always call them ducks. I don't know why. <laughs> and you'd flip them and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It was kind of interesting because I remember uh, back in school, back in high school, I went to the uh, arcades and I saw that for the first time. I'm like, what the hell is this? And I thought this was pretty cool because they had, of course, you know, uh, later on down the road, they've had Mario's and Mario's and Mario's. But to see the original, because I thought at first I thought it was just faked. I thought somebody uh-huh. threw something together and said, aha, this is Mario. But after looking at it and I looked through my, you know, 
information. It was the original Mario uh, brothers together. That was the first time you ever see Luigi. You know, you never see mm-hmm. Luigi in other games. Yeah, well, except for like Mario, you know, Sunshine and, and all that stuff. But and yeah, the he, the newer end right. of the games rather than the originals. Right, right. Like the original, you don't see him. He's just going after the princess. And that's it, you know. You never, and then Luigi got his own little spin off, Luigi's Mansion, which was another great game. I've only played a little bit of it, I never I really got to play game. it. I loved it, Mm-mm. I never got to um, experience it. You know, did it have bosses and stuff too? Or it's been a long time since I've played it, but. I think there was bosses in it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I know, like, you had the Boo Ghosts in it because it was oh. practically the Haunted Mansion mm-hmm. only with Luigi. Mm. And I always, so, I remember him making that noise, Luigi. Or he's always, yeah. <laughs> he always, he always sounded like um, he was always nervous. Yeah. Compared to his. I guess his bigger brother would be Mario. I guess they're, I don't know who's the oldest. I don't even know if there's a backstory between them. Yeah. I don't either. Who's older than Mario or I'm sure somebody could Google that or look that one up down the oh, road. Yeah. But I've never really played those games. I, like I said, Mario parties were my, my bread and butters. You had all those fun games and stuff like this. So the, it, basically it started becoming where it was like, okay, we have this technology. Let's make this family fun days now. Mm-hmm. instead of just solos and stuff and, and i've said it before uh on previous shows where you would have to punch in a code that would say okay this is level three one or whatever it is so like if i i beat a level i would have to grab a piece of paper and then look at the screen and then write down this horrific numbered you know a c two five dash three eight whatever it is and then an, so, so it's like 16 digits long of of alpha numerical to to get to like level three four whatever it is but nowadays it's like you don't even think twice about it you save that's it you don't even have to worry about it we've become oh, yeah. very lazy when it comes to games nowadays you know either it, we've got lazy or the games got better uh, touche yeah that's true too yeah i think zelda was the very first game i think it was the adventures of link it was the golden the golden cartridge that had the very first battery save in it that was like that was it, if it wasn't for that we wouldn't have what we have today it completely yep. revolutionized the whole the whole genre of gaming it just completely took it it accelerated it beyond the stars and when as soon as you were able to save on the on the game, it, they had a little battery pill in it. It has a, like a it looks like one of those little uh, watch batteries. Batteries, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was the very first time you were able to save on a game without worrying about pushing in the, all these numbers and and typing this and that and everything. And it completely took off, and it completely set the it it set the bar so high. It's infinite of what we have today. I mean, I remember. On the PlayStation, the mm-hmm. PlayStation 2, we had the little cartridges mm-hmm. for the saves. You had to make sure that cartridge was plugged in while you were playing. If you didn't, there goes your hours of gaming. <laughs> and you have to do it all over again. I hated that. Mm. I'm so glad that there's saves on the discs now. Like in the actual game, rather than having to plug in a cartridge. And if you lost that cartridge... Oh well, you were out there's of luck. no way you can back it up. I would do. You gotta re- tear your room apart, tear your <laughs> living room, couch, everything. You gotta tear it apart to find that cartridge. I do remember that. Didn't it, it, weren't you able to? You had to plug it in into the console itself, or was it in the controller, or was it the empty slot? Because I do remember those. They it was about the empty. Big. Yeah, it was the empty slots underneath the controller. Plugins that's right on that's the playstation yes that's what it was and and that was again that was like a whole different like holy crap this is a moment where again we don't have to type in a million different 
combination of numbers and stuff because that was pre-code from the makers you know that's yeah. that's how they knew it. okay if i got to this i wrote this down that was the the code to get to level three one or three two mm-hmm. or this boss or that boss but you're right i do remember that now they did have those little things you could buy them and it would hold so many saves of different games and stuff like that and i think it held like three to five at the very beginning so it was actually pretty, pretty well spaced for the time that it had started. And it was completely new. Oh yeah. It was like, it was a, it was like a space race, but on consoles, like who could do this one better? Well, I can do this one better. I can do it on here now. You know, you could mm-hmm. save it on here. Or I think it got to Oh yeah. Point. I'll, I'll hmm. one up you and. Do it like this. I think it got to the point too where I think you could save it on the controller too. If I'm not mistaken, there was a little disc that or something similar, like a little cartridge you would insert in the controller itself instead of sticking it into the port of the the console. I think you would be able to do it further. I think it just got to the point where everybody was knocking off everybody too. I mean <clears throat> think about like Think about, like, the way the games themselves have grown. Like, Mm -hmm. a big one that comes to mind when I'm thinking about growth in games is GTA. Oh, yes. The graphics have grown. The storylines have grown. It just... It's become such... Like... Back in the beginning, it Mm -hmm. was an eyesore. And... I mean, every game's got their glitches, but that game, the like San Andreas, mm-hmm. had some glitches. I, and then you think about how far it's come from, like San Andreas, Vice City, all those up to GTA Five, and it's like GTA has come a very, very long way. It has expanded dramatically. I I never played. The only GTA I ever, for the first, I remember seeing Vice, I remember seeing all that, but I, I never ever got to play the original. I played the GTA 4. In fact, when I throw a commercial, when I do a 30 second uh, commercial, you'll see briefly a video segment of the commercial mm-hmm. where it shows that I'm shooting a rocket at these people. And then there's this other part where the guy, my friend at the time, he had his vehicle parked and he had like a little piece of fencing and it was making his car shake and stuff. It had lots of glitches in it. Yeah. Which were super funny and, and super fun where you could it, sit it there. It made the game more enjoyable, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but also more rage inducing at the same time. <laughs> yes, it did. Yes, it did. I, I remember playing with my friends because we'd always go like towards the, we'd always find the biggest vehicles. Mm-hmm. like the trucks and stuff like that. And it was very boxy. I remember the game itself was very linear to a degree where you would just go in these certain directions. That was it. I remember distinctly too, where if you were to blow through red lights on GTA four, the cops would suddenly just go right after you. Like if, if you know, you would get pulled over or get shot at almost every time you would mm-hmm. like throw the stars up and you'd be wanted by the cops. Yeah. GTA 5 came around. It looks like they completely halted all that and said, look, you know, you like going around, you like destroying things, you like doing this stuff. So let's make the whole world a sandbox where you can just destroy like a shit ton of things. Yeah. You know, and not so worry about the cops so much unless you shoot one or if they see you within that bubble, their vision. They rob a store. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Or if they hear if something, you hear, something that actually warrants the cops to be called but see with like gran turismo and all that stuff i never really played any of those of course i'm not a guy that likes vehicles you know i'm not a you're i i growing up i was always a racer fan i loved my racing games i Mm -hmm. i love the need for speed series forza Mm -hmm. all that my favorite um would be the need for speed need for speed series my favorite one was uh 
undercover. Because you, you get to <clears throat> race as an undercover cop trying to, you know, stop people from racing. It's kind of like contradicting yourself, but... That's interesting. I loved it. See, I've never... I, now, when you put it in that perspective, it's, uh, it, it kind of lures me in a little mm -hmm. bit. You know? Yeah. I wasn't familiar and then, with... And then there was one. I can't remember the name of it. But it's a need for speed. Mm -hmm. And if, if somebody knows the name of it, please let me know because I loved it. I'm thinking it was Burnout. But there, there's this one need for speed game where the whole like plot technically of the game is to go around and destroy things hmm. and rack up money destroying things. And I know it's a Need for Speed game because there's a storyline and stuff. See, I, I wouldn't, that I wouldn't know. That to me immediately. I'm going to have to look that up. You're going to have to look it up. That kind of sounds like, like other games that, of course, today we have and stuff. GTA 4, though, that was my really introduction into like the San Andreas kind of environment. Uh -huh. And of course, I played GTA 5 with numerous people and, and you know, and then when technology, as we keep talking about the evolution of games, there's the other side of the coin bunny where it becomes, oh, well, I can exploit some hacks and stuff into these games. Yes. Oh, my God. <clears throat> and that is something we should talk about as well, too. Like some of the first time that I've ever seen any kind of hackers or people who would exploit you know, ways to, to do this and stuff was Black Ops 2. Mm -hmm. Call of Duty Black Ops 2, I think was... First-person shooters are very well known for being able to have your hacks and your exploits. And at some point in time, it, at different points during games, mm -hmm. it makes it to where you don't want to play it anymore. Exactly. It will make you rage quit so fast. <laughs> And, and that's what and got I've, me. I've done it before. I've rage quit so <laughs> we, many games because of hacks. We won't talk about that. I have never done that before, have I, chat? Mm -mm, no, I've never done anything like that where I've, I could think about <laughs> 5 million <laughs> games I played. <laughs> the, thing, <laughs> the thing that got to me, I, I met a lot of cool people. Like when the first time, when I first started streaming, when I first started playing games as more than just a, you know, I'll do this for like an hour and then you know go to watch TV or whatever the case it is. Was when I started playing Black Ops 2. And then I started streaming Black Ops 2. I didn't realize how easily people were cracking codes to get into the games to exploit things. I never knew that was feasible because I was playing one lobby, and then this person sits there and miraculously had your IP address. Now today IP addresses are people don't know what internet protocol basically it just gives you a certain uh, digits i think it's like a nine digit or 12 digit and it basically gives you a roundabout area give or take 30 miles or so from your location or from the location of your isp it really doesn't home into your house it doesn't do the stuff like this at least to my knowledge it doesn't so a lot of people back then though it was a big scare because people yeah. would sit there and their name, you know, how it says like, you know, Joe Schmo is, you know, you're, as you're loading up, you know, they're waiting for the game to start. There's the lobby, the, right. the, the game lobby where everybody meets up. And then all of a sudden you would see somebody would have like, if you're like, is that my IP address? Or they would change their name on the fly to something else, you know, like I, and it was crazy because I don't know how they did it. But apparently that was a major problem. It still is a big problem from what I've been told. Yeah. Now, why why people did it, I don't know. Why did I keep playing it on the 360? Because the 360 was my my console. But eh. it was <laughs> it was a good game. It was really good. I met a lot of people. In fact, some of my moderators to this day are from Black Ops Tuesdays. Isn't that weird? It's really weird. I mean, like I said, everyone has their own console choice. Right. Mine was not Xbox. Did you ever I come was, across any hackers like that? 
Like, do you remember the game, very first game that you were playing online and somebody did something stupid? Like, they flew around the the map so fast. It was like, holy shit, that is really Sonic the Hedgehog that just flew by you. I don't remember, like, the first one. But I was playing Sea of Thieves not that long ago. (laughs) And, like, I was playing playing with a couple friends. Mm -hmm. And you know how you have the uh, Reaper ships? That have the Reaper treasure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, we were minding our own, doing our thing, and on the map we see a Reaper ship. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, we're going to just, you know, stay away from it. So we go, and we're going to a different, like, port and stuff. And they came, like, you're with the Reaper <clears throat> ships, you're not able to track people down. Right. No, they... They were completely across the map at the bottom left corner. And we were at one of the ports doing Mm -hmm. our thing. And they came straight to us. Like they were tracking us down. Mm -hmm. And they killed us, sunk our ship, all that fun shit. We respawn. They're still up where they were. We start going, doing our thing. Here they come again. It's like, what the heck? And they used their cannons to throw some of... There was like five of them, which you're not supposed to have five right. on a, a ship. Right, right. Immediate flags thrown in your head. You're like, okay, they, they this is suspect. Like, they threw like two or three people with the cannons onto our ship. And they're they're killing us, okay? Mm-hmm. And I come back up and I kill one of them. Like, not even two seconds later. Because I killed him, and I start going for the guy in front of me. No one else was on the ship. Except for me and this other dude, and the dude I just killed. I go to start killing this other dude, because he, um... He started, you know, reloading. Mm -hmm. So, I go to kill him, and... Mm -hmm. I get killed from behind. I'm like, what the heck? I turn around and it's the guy I just killed. Two seconds later, he was already up and Mm. on our ship. Like how? I saw his soul leave his body. See, and that's the thing too. Like uh, some of those games, they have exploits. It seems like they have exploits. Nowadays, we're back when you had the old school games, they didn't really have the coding. And of course, then the online was introduced where, I could connect in with you. I can go to mm-hmm. a, a big cloud. I could connect this person to connect you, connect you, connect you, connect all these people who are from all different parts of the world globally and connect in and play. Now, it, again, is it, I mean, like does the PC player and councils, they are two separate entities, but what is your opinion? What is your thoughts about like, um uh, console players playing with PC players because that's becoming more of the norm too. And I kind of have mixed feelings again, like we talked last week about how people with they would have the upper advantages and stuff like that. Like maybe that experience because when I play Sea of Thieves, I have similar things that happen to me. And they always seem like they're they're aim botish too. Like they have the perfect oh, God, aim. Yes. Like I would be underwater. I'm I'm you know strafing left or right or trying to strafe, and I'm I'm doing this on on a controller, not on PC, and yet I'm still getting my ass shot like that. Like insta headshot kills me instantly. Then of course you know the, the little punk runs his mouth like oh, you know I'm like okay whatever dude. But see, I, I kind of miss the days where it was kind of more innocent. It would be, it was really cool to play with your friends. But then kind of like, as I mentioned about Black Ops 2, it, it's starting to get to the point where people just started exploiting the games and these big, uh-huh. big companies now that are, that make manufacturers like Black Ops series, they really don't worry about those older games nowadays. It's like, okay, I forgot about it. It's it's uh-huh. like, it's like Windows XP is or Windows 7, Windows 8 is, like, gone. You, you don't even hear yeah. about it. If you have a Windows 8 computer at home, I'm sorry to hear that. But if you still have it, or if Grandma still has one, they're not updating them anymore. It got to the yeah. point where it stopped updating. And that's when I got my my old um, my old PC, my old laptop, 
was like the first time I ever saw Windows 10 or whatever it was. I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> but it was just the, 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 the evolution of games from what they had until what they have now. It's like night and day. It really is like like programs, the, the, the programming of it and games have gotten bigger and mm-hmm. bigger. You know, we were just talking, oh, yeah. we were talking about the other day how GTA five is like a hundred gigs. Oh God. Yes. It was a big game. I mean, if you were to say just even six, seven years ago, a game that is like a hundred gigs, you'd be out of here. You'd be like, what the hell are you talking about? Exactly. hundred gigs. Cause even a hundred megabytes back in the day, was huge. You know, oh, it's yeah. like, it's like, holy crap. And now you have games that are. 20 i remember some games were like 20 gigs it was like oh my god on xbox 360 mm-hmm. like i literally could only have like two or three games tops oh yes and it would take forever to install oh it would take forever it would and take forever nowadays, 100 gig game installs in like an hour which is really weird because it's like honestly it's like i've had the same isp for many of years mm-hmm. and i don't understand why now it's like suddenly boosted the speed you know, I mean, I've had the same plan and everything, but it seems like the same plan is different than it was five years ago. But I'm, hell, if I know, but these games, and not only the, the they're getting bigger, yeah, they take longer to load. Mm-hmm. Just like one game I play in particular, where it takes like it, it takes a good three, four, five minutes just to get into the game anymore. I know it's the oh. unstable version, but yeah, still, but. We'll just that one. We'll have to wait and see how it is when it goes live, which is only ten days from now. Ten days so, from now. Hoping that it starts, you know, loading quicker. Mm-hmm. There's not as many bugs. You right. Know. We'll just have to wait on that one and see how it goes. But it's a great game, regardless. Another thing too about bugs and stuff that you mentioned, the old school games. I'm talking games that are pre. I can join you online kind of games. I'm mm-hmm. talking like 2000, 2005 games. You, they didn't have as many bugs. They did have bugs, but if you mm-hmm. notice, they didn't really have as much bugs or glitches in the games. I mean, there's yeah. some games where you could go onto the ground or I could literally go in Mario and I, I could warp to like level seven and stuff like that, mm-hmm. which is understandable. But I mean, do you think it's purposely done? Do you think that the manufacturers today do that on purpose so that way it gives them more work flow? Like, so that way they can make more money into it? Like, say, if I was a dev and I was working with Joe Schmo, who works uh-huh. with, you know, the the bugs and glitches of the game, but what if they needed some extra cash? Be like, okay, I'm going to leave this bug in here. Or is it just because... Just so I can- work on it later and or is it because of the fact that the games are so massively big so f- massively produced so fast that they meet production line guide deadlines and guidelines and stuff like this and they they kind of oops i didn't see that kind of a moment yeah and now I that mean, i that, have to fill it in possibility too because you know like you said these games are massive they're huge it takes it does take time to work out the bugs and i mean yeah it gives them it could be it could give them more money and stuff like that Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but i i honestly think that it's because of how big the games are right more so than you know how much money can we make off of this bug a lot of the old games you know they fit literally in the little cartridge and it would just be 8-bit, 16-bit, whatever the case yeah. is. But then there came the Genesis and the PlayStation first game consoles to really have discs, like CDs. Oh. That I mean, they still hold a lot. If you look at some of them, they can hold, I think it's like 700 megabytes or whatever of information. But oh, they, yeah. they, weren't, they weren't story written as much as they are today. There wasn't that much backstory on games back then. Which mm-hmm. it was you, more just this is this is what you're supposed to do, and yeah. like with Mario, you're supposed to run through, save the princess. Right. That was all the backstory. Right. And then today you got games like the Halo series where you have a whole damn backstory. Right. Or 
the GTA. Series. Oh God, yeah. Storyline to it. It makes it. I mean, it really it, it wets your mouth. You're like, oh, exciting, you know, because it gives you that backstory that you so crave. But at the same time, like for me, like the other day, last week I was playing for the first time Resident Evil 6. I oh, played God, those games are so good. I played some of the old Res- Resident Evils, you know, in the past. And but for some reason, uh, just like we were talking about, I mean, it's a big game. Not as big as like, say, Call of Duty Warzone and stuff, which is 100 gigs plus. Yeah. But this one was kind of heavy. It was 20, 30 gigs or whatever like that. But you got to think a lot of that stuff is voice acting voiceovers then you have the backstory which is like it takes you literally like 15 minutes just to get into the game itself and you can't fast forward and you can't move forward with it you have to actually watch the backstory so everything now is it's got to have a backstory it's kind of like you you know bunny fufu you know she hopped her way into the garden one day and started eating carrots and you know it's it's like there's always a backstory of games today versus games back in the old school days where there was just, you plug it in, maybe you'd read some font that said, you know, this is, you know, the, the year is 2077 and this is technology, blah, 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 and stuff like this. And then you go on your mission and do it. But today, everything is so heavily constructed around backstories and about this person or how this person became to be. I, to the point where it gets kind of nauseating at some points because it's like I want to get into the game. I'd love to hear in the backstory. I love hearing all that fun stuff, but now I have to wait like 15 minutes just to get into the game. Whereas back then you didn't have any of that stuff, and that's what makes it like totally different than you know back in those those times. I, I don't know. I I guess it's a plus and a minus. Everyone's got their opinions on them. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's either yay or nay for some. You know, I, I like lore. Don't get me wrong. I love lore. I love I love hearing stuff like that. But then if you want to talk about lore and stuff like that, like a Skyrim or oh, any. Oh, God, yes. Skyrim. Any ESO games. You know, they have all the back. I mean, they're all in books. Like a Fallout, Fallout series. It's all. Yep. And computers, and a lot of people don't even read that stuff, but yet it's still coded into the game. And then that just takes up space. It takes up more space and space and space. And a lot of people don't like that. They just want to rush through it. They're, they're streamers who play games at an accelerated rate. They want to get start to finish in world record times, but they can't because of those some of those games that have the backstories that just fill in the time thing. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how that happens. Is that going to be the trend? Is that going to be the future? Are you going to have more backstories? Like it's going to be like a movie versus a game itself? Because that's what it feels like. I mean, I don't want it to be like a movie, but I do love my backstories and my lore. I definitely want to see more like backstories. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, That's something that would make me happy because... Don't get me wrong, I love playing my games, but without that backstory, it's kind of, I don't know, it's just kind of, it's not the same. How did you survive with the other games prior to the backstory games today? <laughs> I mean, you know, I could understand it. I'm kind of mixed on it. It's like, okay, it was cool and stuff. You know, I, I heard about Raccoon City and you know, all this stuff from Resident Evil, because that's where I'm going with this again. But it was like two, it's like, okay, he did this, he did that. And it's like, it takes you 15 minutes to get into the game itself. Like you, then you have to learn the functions of the game. And that's another thing too, about the newer games versus the old games. You just had a B and com combinations of buttons and stuff back then. It was just a, and then, yeah, <laughs> unless you're doing like mortal Kombat, like finishing moves, you know, that was, yeah. That was fun too. I loved my Mortal Kombat's and oh, yes. I've always I always remember some of the ABBA left right left right, you know, like some of the finishing move. Finish him, you know. I mean, yeah. when you say that, who does not know where that's from, right? It's like implanted in your skull like you just know it. Some of these people it's today those, that. it's it's more muscle memory than actual memory. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like it's it's more like keyboard and mouse too to a mm-hmm. degree. That's more muscle memory. You know, oh, yeah. forward, backwards, and stuff. Because, like I, I've said before in previous shows, it's like 
I a year ago, if you would have saw me playing a, a, any game that was on a PC, you would have laughed your tail off. You your your fluffy tail would literally be laughing itself off because you'd be like, "Oh my god, how can this guy even keep up with me?" <laughs> it was horrible. I mean, I I feel the muscle memory of WASD. It's like I can do this overnight now. I could do it again if I if I didn't play count if I didn't play PC any PC game for like six months, five, we'll say three months conservatively. I mm-hmm. could, and then get back to it. I'd probably be just like that into it. Immediately be able to it's, go it's like, right back into it. It's like riding your bike, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's how it was with some of those console games too. And I oh, st- yes. Sonic and, and all the good mm-hmm. stuff. I bet you I could pick up a controller right now and play some Mario and be perfectly fine. When that be see that's isn't that cool how that works like that it's like yeah, the old school games they were so fun limited fun but they were still very very much fun at least yeah. I I thought it were you know they were did you ever play Battle Toads I did not you ever play Toad Jam and Earl no <laughs> that was Sonic or that was a that was on the Genesis I remember that one because the the music you'll have to Google it the music was actually pretty retro it was pretty cool again that was like 16 16 bit music but it was really good music you know a lot of them and of course the battle toads they have the infamous pause menu screen and it's just like mm, doom 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 mm. Ooh, uh, 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 ooh, uh, uh. It's, it almost reminds me of that one song, Hooked on a Feeling in the Beginning. You know, Hooked on a Feeling, where it's like, ooga, chuga, chuga, ooga. Mm-hmm. But it's it's catchy, and a lot of people will remember that. There's probably some memes and stuff, or probably some sound bites and stuff from it on YouTube somewhere that somebody's like, oh, I can use this, you know? Mm-hmm. It was fun. It was exciting. It was it was new. I mean, what do you think that's going to happen in the future with this stuff? I mean, we're just going to keep getting to the point where all these these games are they going to get bigger and bigger? So I mean, the possibilities with this stuff is endless. It's obviously. yeah, it's infinite. The more technology improves, the better I think the games and stuff are going to be, and the better, you know, the better the graphics and right. the like the soundtracks mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and the better the like saving since we had an issue with saving right oh yeah do you think games are going to become like 4k like could you imagine like you could literally see the pimples and indentations of the pores i'm pretty sure that's going to be the next thing that's going to happen is 4k well, video games well see here's the problem though because you know how it was everything was getting smaller at the time everything okay. wanted to be compact like mp3 yeah. players you know the little mp3 players that are non-existent we'll talk about that later down this uh on the later in the show but things got smaller and now everything's starting to get bigger again it's like what the hell happened like i thought you were getting it used to be the smaller the better now it's going back to bigger is better and games are getting bigger it's going to get to the point where we're going to have to go back to either getting bigger hard drives or ssds for these consoles mm-hmm. and and pc games because oh, yeah. they're not going to be mean... able to hold 100 gig 200 300 gig games yeah, it's going to be terabytes soon. We're now talking thousand gig. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like holy shit. I mean, how much bigger are these things going to get? How much, I mean, it all all depends. How much more graphically what, detailed? I mean, it can get better graphically. But that's going to that's going to cost a lot, though. I mean, you, uh, I not, know. not only for price points for price tags itself, but also too for the the GPU. You're going to have mm-hmm. to build. Because everything kind of, it's like a car. You, you can have an engine, but then you got to have everything else to make the car run itself. So, you're yep. gonna, so you might have like a beefy, you know, 500 horsepower car, but at the same time, you got to have the frame that can hold this engine. It can hold the speed it can do. You got to have the carburetor. As well as the transmission. Exactly. So now you got to, it's, it's like everything has got to have pieces like to itself. If you have like a terabyte game. Now you got to have a, a space to store it. You got to have the graphics that can hold that process of all that information at once. It's it's mm-hmm. it's going to be interesting. I could see it down the road, but I don't know how that's going to be. It's going to be uh coming up here we're in the second hour. We got some horror stuff to talk about, huh? 
I'm not talking about ex-girlfriends or boyfriends in the past. I'm talking the genre of horror films like zombies. zombies. That's going to be an interesting one. So stay tuned for that, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be back here very shortly. Myself and Bunny Fufu shall return. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.